this theorem says every ideal of a ring R is the kernel of a ring homomorphism of R. They could have stopped the theorem right there, but they added a sec second sentence to make it more clear what they're talking about and make it easier to prove. In particular, an ideal A is the kernel of the mapping that sends your arbitrary ring element of capital R to the left coset R plus A in the factor group R mod A. So, I mean, the main thing is verifying that that mapping is a ring homomorphism and that it indeed does have a kernel equal to A. That's the goal here. This is sometimes called the projection mapping of R onto its this uh, particular uh, factor, factor ring. So you're given a ring R and an ideal A of R. And yes, again, if you want to go ahead and use normal subgroup group notation here for ideals, I'm okay with that. Again, I don't typically see ring theorists do that in the few ring theorists that I've met in my life, but uh, I would know what you mean there. We want to show that the mapping, now the book calls, it, if you look back at the corresponding theorem in chapter 10 about group homomorphisms, the book calls this mapping, or the author Galleon calls the mapping gamma, but I was always uh, told to call it pi, uh, not because it's the number pi, but because it's pi starts with P and P also is the first letter in the word projection. It's a projection mapping of R onto this factoring. And why do, why do we visualize this as a projection? Well, if this is the ring R, when you make a factor ring, again, also called a quotient ring, R mod A based on some ideal A in R, you are, unless A is trivial, looking at a smaller ring, so to speak. Now, that's a little bit of a funny thing to say because it's possible that R could be infinite and and the factor ring could be infinite as well. That's possible, but typically you think of it as being smaller. And in fact, what ends up happening is that the individual left cosets of A in R, let's imagine drawing those, these are a bunch of different left cosets of A, will get mapped to individual elements of the uh, factoring, and that really is the essence of the first isomorphism theorem. So th this entire coset, for example, will get mapped to some individual element down there. Um, because remember, with the factoring, the elements of the factoring are cosets. Essentially, this coset that I'm drawing up here as a set in R becomes a one-point element in the factoring. And maybe this coset right here gets mapped to this point right here. A itself would get mapped to the zero element. Whatever A gets mapped to, it's going to be the zero of the factoring. A equals zero plus A. Anyway, we're going to show this is this is kind of like a projection. You're, it's like projecting something bigger into something smaller. That's the origin of using the letter pi here. It has nothing to do with the number pi, just that pi starts with P, just like projection starts with P. This is defined by the formula pi of R equals R plus A. And by the way, there's, in case it wasn't clear, there's no need to show that this is well-defined here because the you're talking about a ring that has individual elements that are not cosets, for example, and you don't have to worry about representatives. We are talking about mapping individual elements of R to cosets, not the other way around. So there's nothing to do with showing this is well-defined here. This is definitely well-defined. Show that this is a homomorphism, a ring homomorphism with the kernel equal to A itself. That's the goal. So the point of this is that um, ideals and kernels are basically equivalent ideas. That's almost a pun, or, or it is a pun. Ideas, ideals? No. Yeah, almost a pun. Ideals and kernels are almost the same idea. They're almost the same concept. 
So what's the proof of this? Um, and we want to show it's a ring homomorphism. So it's a matter of just showing it's uh, operation preserving, doubly so, preserving both addition and multiplication, and also verify that equation right there. And it's just based on the definition of what it means to um, add and multiply cosets. As far as being well-defined, you could say, let R comma S be in capital R. To show it's well defined under addition, pi of R plus S by this formula up here is the coset R plus S plus A. <clears throat> but by the definition of coset addition, that's the same as R plus A plus S plus A. That's the definition of coset addition in the factor ring. And by the way, you do need A to be an ideal again for the factor ring to be defined in the first place. Just as if A is a subring and not an ideal, then the factor ring is not necessarily defined because the factor ring operations are not necessarily well defined. Actually, addition would be well defined, but not necessarily multiplication because addition, remember, rings are abelian groups under addition. So subrings actually are normal subgroups under addition. They're just, just not necessarily ideals under multiplication. A lot to think about. And that's uh, pi of R plus pi of S. And under multiplication, what does it mean to multiply two left cosets? You multiply the representatives. We got the answer there. Here's the original multiplication. That's the definition of multiplication in the factor ring. So that verifies that it's a homomorphism, a ring homomorphism. <clears throat> All that's left is to verify that the kernel of pi equals A. Um, that's technically we need to show two inclusions here. If an element's in the kernel, then it's also an A and vice versa. We could effectively do that at once here if we're not writing sentences by writing double implications here. R being in the kernel of pi is equivalent to saying pi of R equals zero plus A. It's the zero element. Oops. But pi of R equals R plus A. And this equality by properties of cosets is equivalent to saying R is an A. Done. These are double implications. If you got something in the kernel, it's going to be an A, and vice versa. If you got something in A, it's going to be in the kernel. And again, it's based on this implica this double implication is equivalent to, to the uh, with group theory, the fact that. A H equals H if and only if A is an H. We're just using addition notation instead of multiplication notation. Okay. So it's not really in the big scheme of things that difficult of a proof, but you just have to have a clear understanding of what you're supposed to do. Um, yeah. Kernels, ideals, and kernels of ring homomorphisms are basically equivalent, is what this is saying. Every Ideal is the kernel of some ring homomorphism, and kernels are ideals. That was your other problem. <clears throat>